Ladies and gentlemen, move over NVIDIA and move over AMD. There's a new kid on the block and their name is Qualcomm. Well, not quite new, but certainly in the console space. Many of you are probably familiar with Qualcomm chipsets, especially if you've got a newfangled device in your pocket known as a cell phone. But when it comes to consoles and desktops, well, let's just say that they haven't been so pervasive in the industry. But there is a very fascinating report that has been floating around over the last day or so. And basically, Qualcomm are apparently within uh, negotiations at the moment, not only with Nintendo, but Sony as well. This is according to Alex Katosian, who is the SVP, Senior Vice President, over at Qualcomm, so he probably knows what's going on. And they have been in discussions with, as I mentioned a moment ago, Nintendo and Sony SIE. It's unclear, however, whether this is going to lead to an actual partnership. And you can see this is from a tweet from, I'm probably going to pronounce this incorrectly, I apologize, Revenganus. Um, so, of course, I will leave a link to their Twitter account as well. Now, this is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Currently, the PlayStation Q or Q Lite or whatever you want to call it has not actually had its official specifications disclosed. What we do know is it's basically a streaming device that doesn't have a ton of its own performance. It basically can't play its own games locally. Instead, as I said, it streams games from your PlayStation 5. And basically, the best way of describing it is a TLDR elevator pitch is the Wii U pad in many ways. Now, as a device, its use and excitement to you is definitely going to vary depending on your home setup. For example, do you only have one main screen and does someone else watch a lot of TV on it? Do you play a lot of console games in bed and maybe your PlayStation's in another room? And so on and so on. Personally, it's not something I'm that interested in, but as always with these things, it's going to depend on things like pricing and currently we do not know the price of this device. However, it's also possible that Qualcomm could be providing the chipset for that. But there's been also the very possibility that we could see Qualcomm provide chipsets for other PlayStation hardware. Now, before Tom Henderson's report, I'd actually been hearing myself that Sony were working on a PlayStation portable device. In fact, I actually reported it several times, but my plans, what I'd heard anyway, is it was its own discrete gaming device. Now, rather interestingly, I honestly don't remember if I mentioned this at the time on the channel, um, because by the time I kind of heard about this, the reports from Tom Henderson were coming out, and I was not really sure what things were fitting together. But I had heard that, yeah, um, Qualcomm were in discussions with PlayStation. So it's very possible that those discussions actually became, well, PlayStation Q, so to speak. Um, however, it's also very possible that this could lead to a new PlayStation Portable. Now, what I'll also add to this, of course, is Nintendo. Before we start to delve too deep into this, Nintendo are an interesting one. As most of you know, the um, Switch, the current iteration, is basically using NVIDIA's hardware. It's based on Maxwell. And even when it got launched, it wasn't exactly a technical powerhouse. There's bandwidth constraints. And as a console, the Switch is pretty cool. But it's really starting to show its age now, despite the fact that developers have performed miracles. You know, uh, both Zelda games are really impressive. We've got, let's say, Doom, uh, Doom which, which looks really cool on it, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, the system is essentially a mid-performance uh, cell phone. And uh, there were, of course, a lot of rumors that we would see a Switch Pro. And now it's probably going to just be a Switch successor. I'm going to call it Switch 2 for this video, but it's probably not going to have that name. I mean, it's Nintendo. They're probably going to call it like Mario's Hat or something like that. Who the hell knows? But I think it's probably going to be like one generation ends and another begins. And it's possibly going to have backwards compatibility. What I've heard is that it's still going to be NVIDIA based. And this seems to be the general consensus online. There was also, of course, the infamous NVIDIA hack. And the NVIDIA hack did seem to indicate that there was a Switch piece of hardware that did support things like DLSS, which of course, well, you need like an updated NVIDIA GPU to be able to do that. Basically, Maxwell just could not run it because it the leverages tensor cores on the GPU. Now, if I were to speculate, and obviously things can happen in the industry. Talks can occur all of the time. And just because you have a discussion with a company, it doesn't mean something's actually going to come of it. I personally think that this is not going to be anytime soon because I think at this point it's very likely that uh, Nintendo are going to be sticking with Nvidia for you know the Switch successor. In the future though, who knows? It's an interesting one. Another source of mine had actually told me that uh, 
Qualcomm were approached, uh, sorry, approaching Sony. And the chap that was actually leading this push was actually, ironically enough, the individual who was largely responsible for getting the deal between uh, Sony and AMD. Now, whether that's true or not, obviously I can't independently verify that, so it's going to be very interesting to see what actually comes of this. Um, I would personally take a lot of the stuff with grains of salt at the moment because, again, we're dealing with potentials and, you know, we don't even know the specifications fully of the Q-Lite anyway. And even if it is Qualcomm, does that mean that there's also another device which is going to be, you know, coming out? Honestly, don't know. Um, I would say that um, I heard through, let's say, whispers that uh, PlayStation would like to do a you know, handheld or at least considering it, but a handheld architecture which is much more similar to, let's say, the PlayStation 6. So there would be some similarities there. I'm still not 100% convinced, honestly, that the PS6 would use Qualcomm hardware anyway. And obviously this rumor is actually stating about mobile. So it's very difficult to know. I think that it would take a lot for them to move away from, um, from AMD, from actual PlayStation 6 hardware. So it's going to be very interesting. Honestly, I find this stuff more fascinating. I, again, I'm going to put a massive grain of salt on this one, but I am extremely curious to see how it all turns out. Speaking of how things all turn out, let's just briefly talk about Intel's 14th generation processors. I'm sure most of you know at this point that it is going to just be a refresh of the CPUs that we've already got. And WCCF Tech managed to wrangle a little bit of information while they were out at um, Computex, where uh, motherboard vendors tend to have loose lips. So this is basically what was told. It's the same architecture. So we still have Raptor Cove P cores and Gracemont for the E cores. It's the same process node. There are higher clock frequencies. They're about six gigahertz or possibly beyond. Support for faster DDR5 memory. <laughs> Power consumption. Insert memes here, please. Insert memes here. Power consumption is close to 300 watts. Although honestly, when it comes to power consumption, as most of you know, it's based upon motherboard configuration workload and you can get way over, you know, the TDP of, let's say, the 13900K anyway in certain situations. It is a whole thing. But yeah, I don't necessarily think that's going to be a big deal. Most of these rumors actually are very close to what I've leaked before concerning Raptor Lake, uh, uh, Raptor Lake refresh. Basically, the only thing I've personally heard may differ in terms of the core counts at the mid-range. Um, so, for example, you know, the i5s, the i, you know, that type of thing may get a small bump in the, in the E cores, I think I was told. Uh, I forgot to actually make a note down before I recorded, because I'm an idiot, but it'll pop up on a slide anyway. Um, but yeah, so this is an interesting one. I don't necessarily think I'm going to be super excited about these processors. You know, at the end of the day, if there was more cash, if it was a newer node or something like that, I think it would be more interesting. It's going to be absolutely fascinating, though, to see what happens in the desktop market. As you are probably aware, Zen 5 is going to launch next year at this stage. Um, so the 14th generation is basically, as I said, a refresh of the 13th generation. The real win is going to be when we move on to the 15th generation, where we see Arrow Lake. In case you missed the previous news, uh, Meteor Lake is now, well, at least for now anyway, it seems dead for the 15th generation. Whereas previously, Intel were doing like this bifurcated launch with the um, Meteor Lake processors being i3 and i5, I think it was. And high-end i5s, i7s, and i9s were all going to be Arrow Lake. And this is because of the core count differences as well between Meteor and Arrow. The other problem, however, with this, not only just the naming convention and the core counts, but... Of course, the really big difference is that there were IPC differences. So even if you were to have two processors on a single thread uh, workload, let's say, the Arrow Lake processor would, in theory, assuming the clock frequencies are roughly the same, easily beat Meteor Lake, simply because, again, there's higher IPC, which, I, I don't know, like, stuff like that kind of irks me. I find it irksome because it's... Uh, I think it's confusing customers, although honestly, this is not the first time that we've seen something like that. So, although honestly, this is not the first time we've seen a company launch something like that. You know, sometimes you have two different um, generations of GPUs under the same banner or whatever. So it, it you know, it, it, it wouldn't be, uh, 
it wouldn't be surprising. With that all said, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. It's YouTube. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.